Hello and welcome to NADA. I'm Christine Genier. UFO stories are everywhere these days, but it's rare that they're told from an Aboriginal perspective. In December of 1996, approximately 31 people claimed to have witnessed a giant UFO along a 340 kilometer stretch of highway in the Yukon. As we discover, this was no ordinary sighting, and according to legend, this is not the first encounter with UFOs in the Yukon. We hope you enjoy the show. Until recent times, the histories of Canada's Aboriginal peoples, especially in Yukon, was not recorded in written form. Their stories of creation, how they viewed their world, and major events throughout time have, for the most part, been passed along through the oral storytelling tradition. Some stories told around campfires since time immemorial are of strange entities or spirit beings who interacted with humans. Other stories suggest beings who manifested themselves in various aerial phenomena, such as lights or clouds in the sky, sometimes taking locals to strange and distant worlds. These stories were told and retold long before the Roswell UFO incident of 1947, and while anthropological in nature, the stories foreshadow many of the UFO phenomena observed around the world over the past six decades. Now, the Yukon, famous for its wilderness, wildlife, and beauty, and its rich First Nation and Gold Rush history, has entered the vast database of UFO research with a story of its own. It's a unique account, not only because of the scale and location of the sightings, but because it appears to put into perspective many of the stories told for hundreds, perhaps thousands of years around crackling fires, of strange beings and lights in the nighttime sky. This story unfolds, not around a campfire, but on a lonely stretch of highway. This is the North Klondike Highway, it is a 541 kilometer stretch that begins in Whitehorse, the capital city of the Yukon Territory, and runs through several communities and gas stops before ending in Dawson City, the hub of the Klondike Gold Rush of 1898. At certain times of the year, travel along this highway can be a long, lonely experience, especially at night. On a cold winter evening in 1996, over 30 people witnessed an event that would leave them wondering what they saw and questioning their own reality. Travelers on this highway spot something out over a lake that makes them skid to a stop. Around the same time that evening in three different communities in the region, several people witness an object hovering over their villages, leaving them shaken and in one case, face down on a bridge trembling with fear. This strange event was investigated and recorded by Martin Jasek, founding member of the Yukon UFO Research Society. At Fox Lake, the first sighting was around quarter to eight o'clock, quarter to eight in, in the evening. Um, then at uh, the main sighting there occurred around 8.30. In Carmax, it was seven o'clock. Um, some indications there might have been a 10 o'clock sighting as well. Um, the village of Pelly Crossing, it was 9 o'clock, and in the village of Mayo, it was around um, uh, 10 o'clock. For Danny Skookum, the evening starts out like any other. Traveling from Whitehorse to Carmax, he notices that although it's cold outside, it's a clear and cloudless night. At around 8 p.m., he approaches the southern tip of Fox Lake. He sees something out of the corner of his eye. To the northwest of his position is a white light. Not thinking too much about it, he continues on. To him, it looks like a vehicle is shining its headlights on a curve of road. But he knows there's no road. Not out over the lake where he sees the light. Keeping an eye on the light, Danny passes two vehicles heading in the opposite direction. The lights from these vehicles interfere with his vision for a moment. But when his eyes adjust, 
three rows of lights slowly disappear behind a hill. To his astonishment, the lights appear to be part of a larger object. He continues on his way, thinking what he just witnessed looked like something out of a Star Trek movie. But this is not a movie. This is very real. We refer to the witnesses to protect their names by, as uh, Fox 2 or 1 or 3. Fox 2 and Fox 3, they were driving along the lake. And they came down this hill here, and all of a sudden, um, this huge row of lights appears, a UFO actually. They could see the outline of the top and bottom. And I notice as I look across that lake, I notice there's something huge in the air. I thought that uh, there was no way there's a helicopter out here, especially in the winter. Or I don't think a helicopter would be flying late at night. Or I don't think a jet plane would be flying at low or staying one place in the air. Uh, they stop about uh, five or six hundred meters apart, and um, the UFO slowly goes over the lake. But you can see the lake and uh, the mountains, roughly, and how huge it was over there. The size of it, I would say, is as big as a football field. And it got even bigger when it got closer. As the object moved directly over him, the witness, referred to as Fox 2, got out of his truck and stared up into a bright light. As I seen, uh, when I seen up, it's so bright though, but uh, kind of like a saucer shape thing. As it went over, it's bright, it has lights all over underneath. But it had lights on the side too, as I seen. I can see, clearly see little windows, like almost like on the side. You see under it, uh, kind of like a plate, almost like, like a long plate or whatever underneath like when it went over. The witness tries to use a two-way radio in his truck, but when he turns it on, all he can raise is static. What is that? I was wondering. I couldn't fit. And uh, the radio went all bzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
In Yukon, the Braeburn Lodge is situated about halfway between Whitehorse and Carmax. It's a popular stop for travelers between the two centers, a place where tourists and truckers can satisfy an appetite and swap stories with Steve Watson, the owner-operator of the lodge. He's heard a lot of stories during his time there, but on the evening of December 11, 1996, he heard of an event that seemed so incredible it would leave him scanning the evening skies around his property for months afterwards. I was sitting at the table, it was getting later at night, and uh, there's usually people coming back from Whitehorse, and this fella came in, uh, Danny Skookum, from Carmax. And Danny's a good friend of mine, and we're, he's quite excited, and he's, he starts telling me about this object he, he saw at, at Little Fox Lake, and he's describing it to me in, in quite, quite a bit of detail. As I pulled into Braeburn, there was a lot of people there, and everybody was scattered around. They were all excited, and everybody was talking about it. A little while later, another car came in, and this other fellow, he was quite excited too. They all just, they were really excited, and they come in. There's some, I think he had some people with him, and he sat down. And we all started talking and talking about it, and he starts drawing the, the, the exact same thing that Danny had just told me. He, he drew it, and while he was doing this, a bunch of other people came in from, from Pelly, and they uh, described the same thing that was being drawn. <laughs> and it was kind of weird, you know, like they, uh, they all, they, yeah, they were pretty excited about it, because they all, they all realized that they all saw the same thing. We can calculate uh, the actual size of the UFO. They did say it was huge. So here's Fox 4 and 5's location. You project that angle out to here where Fox 2 and Fox 3 were. Here's a few estimates of the size of the UFO. And based on those drawings, you can see the scale here. Um, it was in the order of one or two kilometers, maybe just under a kilometer for the smallest estimate here. Pelly Crossing has a total population of less than 300 people, 80% of whom are First Nation. It's 282 kilometers northwest of Whitehorse on the banks of the Pelly River. Most of the work is in government, providing services such as education and health. The main employer is 